So we're just doing one little kind of bit extra than we did yesterday. Now remember the factor theorem was looking at that constant and doing all the factors of it. We're going to be doing the uh, rational zero theorem. And we're going to go all the way down to the bottom. Because this really states what the rational theorem, zero theorem is. It's the zeros of an integral polynomial function p of x are the form p of q, where p is the numerator of the factor of the constant term, and the denominator is q, is, was be the factor of the leading coefficient. Again, I can sum this up very quickly and as an example. If I had 3x squared plus 2x plus 2, the last number, the constant, is going to be p, and the number in front of the leading coefficient is going to be q. And then just to give all the factors for p over q. Now, what are all the factors of p? So I'm looking at the 2. What are all the factors of 2? What are they? Positive plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. How about for the Q, which is 3? Got plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 3. No, sorry. Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3. Okay. Now, what you want to do, and I'm, I'm going to do it the way the book does it, is they take the top ones and divide by the first one first to get it all its numbers. So, I'm going to take this. What's 1 divided by? So, I'm going to take this divided by this and this divided by this and write down the answers. Then I'm going to write this divided by this and this divided by this and write down all my answers. And that will all be all of my numbers that I'm going to try. So with the positive plus and minus 1 divided by plus minus 1, that's plus minus 1. Now if I take this one here and divide by this one, I will get plus or minus 2. Okay, so I've done the 1. It's kind of like crossed out now. Now with the 2, I'm going to do every 1 on the bottom. So 2 divided by 1 is... Oh, no, what am I doing here? Yeah, so I did the one. I basically should have crossed that out, sorry. So I do it differently than the book. I always do mine, so i got to actually try and... Um, so I've done that one already. Now I take 1 divided by 3, and I will get 1 plus or minus 1 third, and 2 divided by 3, which is 2 thirds. See, what I like to do is I like to take the first number on top, and then I divide them by all the bottoms. Then I take the second number, divide them by all the bottoms, right? And the book likes to do it a different way, and I don't know, maybe that's easier for people, I don't know. But get all of them, is what I'm saying, okay? And there is no other ones I can come up with. Now, those are the ones you need to try in there, okay? So that's where my P over Q comes from. Okay? Now, if I was to consider this polynomial, now always this is your P and this is your Q. So you've got to remember it's not right to left. It's actually left to right PQ. Okay, so that's something, again, you don't want to screw up on the test, right? So that's a good thing to write in the study sheet. Now, all the factors for negative 9 are these. And all the factors for 5 are these. So that's where we get this here. That's my P over Q. Now, they took all the top ones and divided by positive 1. So 1 divided by 1 is 1. 3 divided by 1 is 3. 9 divided by 1 is 9. Okay? Then the next one was dividing by 5. So 1 divided by 5 is 1 fifth. 3 divided by 5 is 3 fifths, and 9 divided by 5 is 9 fifths. 
Okay, so whatever way you want to do it, um, just get all of them. Okay, now, what would be all of the potential binomial factors? Okay, so if we look at the 1, well, that would be x minus 1, x plus 1. I got plus or minus 3, so it would be x minus 3, x plus 3. I got plus or minus 9. X minus 9. X plus 9. Next one is 1 fifth. So what would that be? It's not going to be X plus 1 fifth, X minus 1 fifth like we've been doing because you cannot have a fraction in your factors. So what would it be? 5x, we'll go minus 1 and 5x plus 1. Right, so you always got to be thinking, right? Okay, and the next one would be the next one be okay, 5x plus 3. Ooh, I don't know why I did that. Okay, and last one is, what's the last one? 5x minus 9, 5x plus 9. Okay, now, remember, this is an x cubed, so I just need to find one of them. Like, you could actually, I'll tell you that all three of them are in there, right? But it's not efficient to go through all of them sometimes. It is efficient to get it down to that x squared because you may go through all of them and find out that only one worked. So you kind of, um, if you know the answer, you could say, well, I'll just go through that. It's way quicker. But only, I, I said that I guarantee you that the diploma will give you enough to get down to the x squared. You might have to use the quadratic formula after that. So kind of bank on that the rest aren't nice. So which one, what's the one we could try that will get us down. Well, they sh they kind of gave us the big hint there. But does anybody know the next one that would work? Let's see who's the first one that can actually find that one. What is the next number in all that garbage that would work? Don't look in the book. Can't believe you do that. Just when you think you know someone. Yep, nine works. Good. Okay. So, and then the other one that actually works, you'll find, is one-fifth. But we don't know that. We're, it says x equals one. They were nice enough to give. So let's just divide by one and see how to do it the real efficient way. Because even that time it took... A whole class to find the next one we could have got it done already so one oh I gotta put all my numbers down negative 51 55 and negative 9 nobody's missing so one times 5 is 5 negative 51 and 5 is negative 46 1 times negative 46 negative 46 45 or 55 and negative 46 9 okay 9 comes up and it's 0 okay so what I'm dealing with, I've got x minus 1. That's one of the factors. Okay. And then i got to try, and this is 5x squared minus 46x plus 9. Right? So what I'm looking for are two things that add to give me negative 46 and multiply to give me 45. What are they? negative 45 and 1, right? So, no, positive, negative, positive, negative 45 and negative 1. Yeah, so it would be 
5x squared minus 45x minus 1x plus 45 plus 9. Okay, and then I'm going to try and I'll take out a 5x, leaving me with x minus 9. I'll take out a negative 1, leaving me with x minus 9. So coming up here, my factors are x minus 1, that was the first one, x minus 9, and 5x minus 1. So this one asked for solve the equation. So what are the zeros? Are 1, 9, and 1 fifth. Okay, just one more. My short notes today. Okay, so this one determined all the real solutions. Okay, so what I'm going to do, my factors are going to be all the factors of negative 3 going to the top, or 3, right? It's the same thing. Um, so that's plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. On the bottom, so remember it's P over Q, right? So on the bottom, plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. So all the numbers that I can check are 1, 3, and then 1 half, and 3 over 2, and put plus minuses in front of them. Okay, I need one that works. Because remember, it's an x cubed. One will be for sure in those. Three over two. Okay, so 3 over 2. Is anything missing? 3, 2, 1, 0. Oh, they're all there. 2, negative 1, negative 1, negative 3. Bring down my 2. 3 over 2 times 2 will be 3. Negative 1 and 3 will be 2. 3 over 2 times 2 will be 3. Negative 1 and 3 is 2. Negative 3 over 2 times 2 is 3. Zero. Okay. So x minus three over two is the first. Okay, uh, and then that's times two x squared plus two x plus two. Okay. Now whenever you divide by over 2 in synthetic division. What was that really? Good. 2x minus 3. Remember when we ever had to convert to get to there? There's something we had to do after we finished synthetic. And what was that? Take out the 2, right? Okay, and that was x minus 3 over 2. I had a conversation with someone just a few minutes ago, and they, uh, they got a tutor, but I guess he's pretty old school, and uh, when he was going to do a fraction, he said, no, you can't use synthetic when it's 3x plus 2 or whatever. And, you know, obviously you can't, but uh, you got to know this one trick. So now this is 2x minus 3, and this is times x squared plus x plus 1. Now, we need two numbers that add to give me 1, but multiply to give me 1. Yeah, so we better use the quadratic, okay? So this is A, B, and C. So it is negative 1 plus or minus square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1. It's pretty hard to screw this one up over 2 times 1. This would be negative 1 
plus or minus square root of hmm? negative 3 all over 2. Square root of negative 3. Okay, so final answer is this, and x equals 3 over 2 is the only real solution. Now, what type of graph would give this? Now, this is something that is going, and we're going to do a lot more of this when we come back. It's something that's going from low to high, left to right, and it's only going through 0.3 over 2. Now, it's not going to be a straight line, because straight line is for x. So x cubed would look something like this, I bet you. And that's quite not going through the x-axis. That's why I'm not getting those two other points. Okay? So that's what a graph would look like that would be an x cubed that actually only has one solution. But you see if I did a horizontal translation now with a couple, three up, then I'd get my answer, right? Okay, so we're doing 1 to 2 and 4 to 12. Yes, I'm stopping at 12, just because I like you guys. Okay. I better scroll through the homework for all those people that are laying in bed right now with their laptop. Yeah. I think that's the only color in the whole book, but you saw it here. <laughs> 